So if you own a local business, you understand the importance of your Google local listing. We're going to take a look at the biggest mistakes that business owners make around Google local and how to leverage it for real SEO. So let's talk Google localization. Have you ever seen the near me? Have you seen where when you Google your name, you'll see that your business listing comes up. So we're going to talk about why this is so important for SEO. So let's take a step back real quick. I'm a fan of Google suite. I've got the whole line of products. All my employees are on the Google suite. And of course we have drive, we have all their things. So even if you don't have Google, you're going to have to get Google because that's how they track what your business listing is, where your Google analytics is and a bunch of other features. So I'm going to show you how as a business owner, you got to get your Google on because their opinion is the only one that matters when it comes to search. So we've got to more or less follow the rules. And even if you're an outlook person or whatever, I don't care. You're going to have to have a Gmail account that's associated. So what my recommendation is, is that you open up a new Gmail account. You call it like I would call it findability admin at gmail.com. So make it your admin account. This is going to become the clearinghouse for all of your social media for, and for anything that you're going to be setting up like Google analytics, webmaster tools, search console, all of those things have to be set up under a Gmail account. Ideally, um, you don't have to, but it just makes life a whole lot easier. So go ahead and take a look at my screen here. What we're going to look at is when you set up a Google local listing, once you've got your Gmail set up, you're going to log in and you'll see this little Rubik's cube up here. And the Rubik's cube is all the Google apps. It's right next to your login photo. Now, when I click on that little Rubik's cube, you'll see that a whole suite of icons pops up. When you're thinking about establishing yourself as a local business, Google doesn't necessarily trust you. It doesn't trust anybody really. You got to do a lot of proving to it. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a Gmail account that already establishes you as an expert in your field. Then we are going to then attach your business listing. So you'll see right here, you'll see the very first one is my business. You're going to click on that. Now, if you haven't established a Google business listing or it's just out there floating around, you want to make sure that you claim it. I think it's like 40%. I'll put it in the notes in the video, but like 40% of all local businesses are not claiming their local account. So what happens is you have all these crazy people who maybe got the wrong kind of crust on their pizza, or it was just a little too cheesy and they go in there and they make all these reviews. This is happening without you knowing about it and is affecting your brand. You got to watch what people are saying about you and your Google local listing is a very important part of this conversation. Okay. So what you do is you go to google.com slash business. If you have not claimed your business account, you need to claim it right away. Google.com slash business, set it up, use your new Gmail admin address. Then you start off the whole picture in, in the best possible light. All right. So let's go back here. Let's take a look at my Google listing. So I've already claimed my account. So when you come down here, you'll see your business on Google. Now this is sometimes called the local pack. It was called the knowledge graph for a while. It's been called all kinds of things. It's just your local listing. So when you Google your business name, you should see this Google listing come up right here. Now I'm logged into my Google account. You know, when I hit that icon in my Gmail, that's in my business that I'm going directly to my business account. When I come back here, then you'll see you get like this little dashboard of all of your content and all of your localization. So you'll see here that we have edit info. We have create post, we have add photos, reviews and create ad. Now why this is so important is because you want to control the story of your brand. You don't want anyone else telling that story in a negative light. So we need to get ahead of it. We need to make sure that we have established and claimed our Google business listing. Very easy. Just go to google.com slash business, claim your account, do that now, and then come back to this video and then I'll tell you the rest. Okay. Now we're back from, we've created our account. Now we're going to take a look at how can I make this look like a rock star of a, of a, of a localized listing. So we're going to go into edit information right here. Now I'm going to tweak the name of the company a little bit. And I'm also going to make sure that I got my keywords in there too. When you go to edit info, you'll be able to click on your name and other email and you'll see right over here it shows. So I can go in and I can change this. You'll see I put SEO training Denver right at the front of my business listing. Another way to do it is findability university dash SEO training Denver. 
Then I've got my name in there as well as what we do in the business listing itself. Very important. And then of course, I need to make sure that I've got my website linked, I've got directions to my location, and I've loaded it up with the best possible images. So you'll see right here, add photos. This is where you wanna go and you wanna upload pictures of your full restaurant, pictures of people happily working in their cubicles. Um, you have people out in the field. Don't post what I call ghost town pictures. There's no one there. That means that the lunchroom is empty, the reception area is empty, the cubicles are empty. That's the most boring picture you could possibly post. And it doesn't give any indication of what it's like to work with your company. So it's so important that you start mimicking what it's like to work with us right on the photos themselves. So upload those photos. Let me show you the ones I have in here. So you can control what people are saying about you just with the photos, what people perceive your company to look like. So you'll see here, I have uploaded a bunch of photos of my workshops. So we do in-house workshops, we do certification and training, and you'll see here that we've got the testimonial is right on the image. I mean, this is a game changer. If you get great testimonials, you wanna make sure you get a picture of the client, you put the testimonial right on top, and you upload it to Google Images. Another thing you can do is, let's just say you're a waxing place, right? And you have four different kinds of services. You wanna think about, okay, we do eyebrows, we do bikini, we do legs, whatever. Then you can actually have pictures and you put those services right on the images. Uh, Canva.com, C-A-N-V-A, is a great way to easily upload a photo, put some text on it, and then save it and upload it into Google Images. Canva is a wonderful tool, it's C-A-N-V-A.com. But you'll see here that I took this photo of these two ladies here that attended my training. Um, they took a picture, I asked them to take a selfie with their certificate, which they did, and then they, I put their testimonial right on top. So as people are looking through here, they can see the testimonials right on the page. So important. This is not about your logo moment. I don't wanna see 18 logos here. I wanna see what you're doing, the response from people. So if you're a realtor, make sure you get people getting their keys in front of the house. If you're an auto dealer, make sure you're getting people with keys in front of their car and they're all excited. You, know, you gotta think about what are those ta-da moments. Ta-da! This is the best thing that happens in our business. We need to make sure that we're profiling the ta-das. And when people get that thing from you and they're elated, that's when you wanna take a picture of it and post it to your Google business page. And you'll see here that I just have uploaded a bunch of different trainings. People will know that, you know, I've been around the block a little bit, I know what I'm doing. And I'm working with companies that are really making a difference online. And you know, this is important to me that people understand that I am the real deal. I'm not just some SEO guy working in his basement and I'm just, I'm not that person. Um, you know, I, so these pictures have got to reflect that in a very quick and easy way, okay? All right, so those are your photos, very important. Then now we talk about the big bad reviews. Now reviews can be a real thorn in a lot of people's side, um, especially if you're a restaurant. Restaurants, I, I teach a whole Yelp reputation management class and it is unbelievable the things that I've seen come up in Yelp reviews. If you have a minute, you must go and Google actors read Yelp reviews. It's hilarious. And these actors, actors go in and they read them. Like, my pizza was too cheesy. They said it was light cheese and we got lots of cheese. I mean, it's so funny. But it's true, everyone has an opinion. And if they wanna go on to Google review and say you're the worst person on the planet, there'll be nothing you could do to get it down. It sucks, quite frankly. So what we have to do is we have to buffer. We gotta buffer, right? We gotta pad it a little bit. I wanna pad it with good reviews and I wanna pad it with ongoing reviews that consistently show up. Now, a lot of mistakes that business owners make around Google reviews and their business listing is they ask their mom and their dad and their second cousin and they all go on the same day and they post. What happens is that Google says, eh -eh, I see what you're doing. You're colluding to get everyone to do that. So they suppress those reviews. So here's the trick. Always be logged in to the Gmail account. Tell this to the person who's reviewing you. Log into your Gmail account, then find my listing in Google search results then post a review. One person, once a month. Maybe two, but I would start with one. And make sure they're logged into their Gmail account, very important, st establishes trust and credibility. And then they go in and write something nice about, and, and these will show up organically, but 
I like to pat it a little bit because you do have negative Nellies that will show up and just flame here. And, and you just need to be prepared that this is going to happen no matter how heart focused your business is, how much you care about your customers and employees. There's always going to be a couple out there. So make sure that you're getting ahead of it. You're asking for those good reviews. You've loaded up the best pictures possible and you've popped a keyword right in the title of your company name. So if you are like waxing in the city and you put dash Denver wax or Denver wax company, you're going to be right there when they search for both. So if I go in here and I search, you'll see, I put Denver SEO right here at the front. So if I type in SEO training, Denver, there's my listing right there. Okay. So it's important that we're clear on what do we do with our listing? How do we manage it and make sure that we are on the ball? You can also go in through here. So when you go to Google my business, you'll see that I've got a couple other sites that I help maintain, but this is my listing. When you come in here, this is your dashboard. So you'll be able to manage everything about your company. Now the rye is you can't take reviews down, but you can ask for the right kinds of reviews. So go to your most loyal customers that come in every time you know their name, they know your name or customers that have hired you repeatedly or whatever you feel is comfortable. You go in there and you say, Hey, here's a Starbucks card. Just give us a quick review and, but do one a month, make sure they're logged into a Gmail account so that it really counts. So as a business owner, any business owner on the planet, if you have an address, you have a Google local business listing get in there, trick it out, make it your best photos, drop in a keyword there for SEO, but don't underestimate the power of a Google local listing. Google is the number one search engine on the internet. People make decisions based on who they see in those results. You being there is absolutely critical. So make sure to go in right away, apply these things that I've showed you and you will see a big difference in how your localized listing helps support your SEO. Hey, if you love this video, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell right next to it, and you'll get notified every single time I launch a new video. And I am completely and totally dedicated to making you number one in the search results. Thanks. See you next time.